Okay, it's two o'clock. Uh, thank you all for joining Making Measurements in a CATV System, Utilizing Test Equipment for Accurate Results. My name is Liz Rapley. I'm the Director of Marketing for Blonder Tongue Laboratories. I will be hosting this, but I'm not going to do much of the talking. I'm going to hand it over to our instructor extraordinaire, Wes Waite, in just a second. A couple housekeeping rules. The bottom of your screen, there's a Q&A button and also a chat button. Any questions that come up while the presentation is going on, you can um, put them down in the Q&A or the chat. We will get to the questions after the webinar is finished, or at least after the presentation is finished. We will also, um, if there's a question that is really detailed, we will also reach out to you separately um, to make sure that you have all the information that you need. Um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Wes. Welcome, Wes, to Making Measurements. Thanks, Liz. Uh, like Liz said, I'm, my name is Wes Waite, uh, one of the senior systems engineers here at Blonder Tongue. And today we're going to talk about making measurements in a cable television system and what test equipment best is best suited for uh, different applications. So I've got here uh, several different pieces of test equipment starting at the top left of the screen with the BT Quam Pro um, and, and I'll go into detail into each of these meters. Uh, but we have the BT Quam Pro, then in the center the BT Pro 1000, also with a, an RK option, I'll tell you what that's about. Uh, then on the top right, we have the BT Pro 7000, and the 7000 also has a cable modem and a fiber optic option available for it. And then finally, in the RF uh, meters, we have on the bottom right there the BT Pro 8000S, uh, the latest in our lineup. Uh, we'll do satellite as well as standard CATV measurements. And then finally on the bottom left there, the MTSA Pro is not an RF meter, but it is an analyzer. It's a transport stream analyzer. It basically strips off the digital data off of a carrier and evaluates or analyzes that, that data itself. Uh, does not look at the RF information. So starting with the first meter, the BT Quam Pro, uh, that unit, uh, as you can see, it has a very basic interface, an enter button and four arrows to scroll through the different uh, menu functions. Uh, it can measure cable television signals, Quam signals, the digital uh, cable format. Uh, broadcast signals, the off-air 8 VSB format, and analog signals as well. It will provide uh, MER, modulation error ratio, and BER, bit error ratio readings for those of the digital um, performance specifications for digital channels. It will also measure noise margin and level. Uh, we can get a spectrum analyzer display on this unit, as well as a constellation display. You can see some of the screenshots in the bottom, uh, bottom of the screen here. This is the spectrum analyzer display here. Uh, for an an that's for an analog channel. This is a spectrum analyzer display of a digital channel. Here's a constellation analysis of a digital channel. It can also do a bar scan, just showing bars for each individual channel carrier. Uh, it will do a data logging where you can set it up to record every channel on your system, record the levels and other metrics, and you can download it uh, into a, a program on your computer called the Smart Program where you can not only capture the data and print it out or save it, uh, you can also upload and download uh, different channel plans. If you work with several different systems that have different channel lineups, you can create multiple different channel plans for 
each different type of system you work with. Uh, as it says there, you can also the download and store the, the data logger info and do firmware updates of the uh, meter itself uh, is done through the SMART program. Now, one thing for, for all of our meters um, is basically you need to make sure that the meter is set up to measure signals in the U.S. Um, and, and through the menu selections, uh, we need to get into certain uh, meter setup functions and ensure that we're measuring our signals correctly. These meters are made overseas, so they do have um, dual formats or dual measurement uh, capability. They can measure, our standard for measurement is dBmV, or decibels relative to a millivolt across 75 ohms. And then overseas, uh, most typically, they utilize dBuV, or dB microvolts, for their units of measure. So we're going to go into the config menu, the main menu here, and then hit the config button uh, utilizing the, the, the different arrows and then the enter button to get to our config. And then we're going to go into our meter setup menu um, where we can set up our, our units, make sure our units are in dBmV, decibel millivolts because that can, and a lot of times has caused issues for customers uh, tr thinking they're making the correct measurements, but getting readings that are drastically off, drastically different from what they expect. Uh, just for an aside, uh, decibel millivolt to decibel microvolt, difference in readings is 60 dB. So. If you're at a television outlet and are expecting somewhere between 0 and 15 dBmV uh, for a measurement, and you plug your meter in and see something something about between 60 and 75 instead, chances are you're probably measuring it in microvolts instead of millivolts. So we need to get into that config menu, meter setup, and adjust your units of measure here to make sure you're in millivolts. Um, and under the TV config in country is also where we can set for what, uh, what formats we're going to measure. We have uh, typically in the US, we're, we're going to select either USA BRO for broadcast, uh, USA HRC or IRC. Uh, those are old school analog uh, frequency offset uh, frequency systems. So HRC is a harmonically related carrier. IRC is an incrementally related carrier. Those systems were used primarily in uh, analog uh, cable television systems and not so much used anymore. So typically you're either going to use the broadcast or the USA CAB for USA Cable uh, format for the country code on the meter. And then you can select the discovery. You can do QAM B only, QAM A only, VSB only, which is the vestigial sideband. That's your off-air format or all modulation. Uh, all of these, QAM B, QAM A, and VSB only, We'll also look at analog signals. As you can see, there is no analog only uh, setting. So all of these also incorporate analog measurements. But what it does is if you are working on a cable television plant, a cable television system with only QAM channels and maybe some analog channels, you set it for QAM B only and when you do a scan to detect, you, these meters can detect uh, uh, channel lineups. So they will scan through channels 2 through 158 or whatever the upper end is and determine whether it's a QAM channel or an analog channel and add it to the lineup if it detects it. Uh, so if you do a QAM B only scan, it will only look for QAM carriers 
and analog carriers not looking for 8 PSP signals, which are primarily in the off-air world. So that will help speed up the, uh, the scan by doing a QAMB only or a VSB only scan. Uh, all modulation would look for everything, and uh, uh, all modulation would take uh, significantly more time to run that scan than, than would a, a QAMB only scan, for example. The QAMB A only is uh, QAMB A. Uh, just like the DB microvolts is a uh, European standard. QAM A is also a European standard. Here in the U.S., we utilize QAM B, so that's why QAM B is uh, highlighted there, and not QAM A. Excuse me. So that is the. Oh, before I move on, that is the uh, BT QAM Pro. Again, it's, it's five buttons, basically, a, a power button to turn it on, and then, and then five, four navigation buttons and an enter button to navigate through the screens and take measurements. Um, moving on to its big brother, the, the screen size on this BT Pro 1000 is the same physical size as the screen on the Qualm, uh, BT Qualm Pro. But as you can see, it's got a couple extra buttons. Uh, this has a full numeric keypad, so you can enjoy direct channel entry with it by hitting, for example, 1-5 enter would get you to channel 15. If the, uh, if the cursor is on, like it is here, on a uh, channel number uh, instead of a frequency, uh, this so this essentially makes the same types of measurements: cable television, the QAM format, the uh, broadcast format of 8 BSB, and analog channels. Uh, also measures the MER modulation error ratio, the BER, the bit error ratios, uh, before and after error correction, uh, the noise margin, the level measurements. Uh, spectrum analyzer display, like what is displayed on the screen there, the constellation, uh, the bar scan, the data logger, all of these are just like the BT Quam Pro. It's just this is a, a you know larger unit and it can handle the uh, or it has the uh, numeric keypad included to make it make uh, make uh, navigation a little bit easier. Uh, this, as as well as the BT Quam Pro, the previous meter, this meter also interfaces with the smart program uh, via USB interface uh, to upload and download the channel plans, uh, download and store or print the data logger info, and do firmware upgrades of the meter. Uh, now. Um, this one has um, some different screens here showing the main measurement screen uh, with using the measure button here in the top left of the, uh, of the keypad is the measure button. So the first time we hit the measure button, we come up to the main measurement screen where we see the power level of a channel here, shows the voltages. Uh, the next time we hit it, it would show the noise margin and the MER, the modulation error ratio of that channel, the digital channel. And then the BER, pre-correction and post-correction, the bit error rates on it. And then the final press of the button before it cycles back around would give us the constellation of that. And on this constellation screen, we can zoom in. We can, we can get our cursor over here to the zoom side and zoom in on a specific quadrant of, if we imagine this uh, constellation divided into four sections, we can zoom in on a specific quadrant because I know that is very difficult to tell what's exactly going on here in, in such a smaller screen. In the analog side, if we're measuring an analog channel, the measurement button gets us the level of that analog channel. 
uh, in this case 15.2 dBmV. And then the second press of the measure button will get us to the audio video ratio and the carrier to noise reading of that channel. So the, so the measure button does different things for different types of channels. Finally, on the BT Pro 1000, there is a Pro Idiom option. Pro Idiom is an encryption uh, feature that's utilized in many hotels for digital channels uh, to secure the signal all the way to the television set. This unit uh, has a Pro Idiom rekey option available on it. That rekey option would add a second uh, RF port on it. The main RF input port for measuring is on the left. The Pro Idiom port is an output port on the right side here. And when you hit the Pro Idiom button on the uh, keypad, it would pop up this Pro Idiom menu here. And the Pro Idiom menu has several commands that uh, you can apply to this signal. So you can do a restore, which would restore uh, occasionally, not very often, but occasionally keys, there are the license keys on the television get lost or corrupted. So you can actually restore the keys, send the keys back to the televisions. Uh, and there's a, a Pro Idiom key test command that would send an encrypted signal to verify that the keys on the television are working. The t television would only show a valid picture if the Pro Idiom keys were correct and, and decrypted that signal. Then it has a couple of unencrypted uh, signals just to test the, the uh, performance of the television. There are MPEG-2 uh, streams in both with both AC3 audio or an MPEG-1 layer 2 audio included. And then it has an H.264 or MPEG-4 uh, signal with either AC3 audio or enhanced AC3 audio in the test pattern. Uh, so those four, uh, those four test patterns can be sent to a television in, one at a time individually to test the television. Okay, so that's the, and, and uh, I think one thing I should mention is this Proidium uh, enabled unit typically I believe is only sold to people with Proidium licensing. Okay, so moving on, the BT Pro 7000 is a tablet style uh, meter, color screen as you can see, uh, has uh, many more ports to it than the single Quam, or single RF input port on the Quam Pro and the Pro 1000. Uh, so this has a LAN connection. You can tie into it from your network. It has a couple of USB connections. One is for uh, software upgrades via the SMART program. So connecting it to your computer for upgrading and downloading program, downloading channel lineups and such. Uh, a USB-A memory stick uh, port for being able to capture measurements, or screenshots directly onto a memory stick. Uh, then on the top of the unit, it has an optical input optional with the CM8FO option uh, that would accept uh, directly accept single mode fiber into it right next to it. So that essentially acts like a fiber optic receiver. So right next to it, it has uh, port number eight. There is an RF output port that could then be run directly into the main RF input port on the meter side to measure that RF signal uh, from the fiber optic receiver. And then finally, on the rightmost side of the top of the meter, it has a cable modem optional accessory uh, that acts like a true cable modem uh, when when plugged into a RF distribution plant that has a cable modem system on it. So 
So these meters have uh, a thumb wheel for navigation in the top right of the face of the unit here. There's a thumb wheel, also acts as a enter button, push button, uh, or the screen is fully touch capable, so you can just tap on one of the uh, one of the settings that you want to change, and it would pop up a uh, channel. If you want to change the channel from channel 13 here, you could tap the screen there, and it would pop up a channel listing, and you can either scroll through it or uh, hard punch in a channel number, or in this case, in this example, our frequency, and uh, be able to adjust it. So these, these, this meter, the Pro 7000, measures from 5 megahertz up through 1,250 megahertz, so the full CATV spectrum and part of the satellite spectrum, although it's not billed as a satellite uh, meter. Uh, but it is the, basically the ex extended uh, cable television frequency range. <clears throat> so here I'm showing several different types of screens uh, from the BT Pro 7000. We have the, the main measurement screen, uh, which shows picture. If it's picking up an unencrypted channel, it will show the the actual picture of the channel shows this is a off-air channel 8 VSB, so it's showing the power of that channel, the modulation error ratio, the noise margin, and then the bit error rates before and after error correction, all on that one screen. It also has the spectrum analyzer view, uh, full screen spectrum analyzer shot, so you can see uh, in detail several different uh, channels at once. It has a bar scan uh, bar graph, so you can tell, and it does denote the difference between analog and digital channels by color. I believe in this case that the yellow bars are digital channels and the uh, blue bars are analogs. It, it shows here that this screen is the uh, fiber optic measurements, uh, so the direct level in from the fiber optic um, system, in this case is 6 dBm. You can see across, um, across the, the spectrum there. And then up in the middle here we have, this is the DOCSIS, the cable modem measurement screen. So it will show, uh, in addition to just locking like a cable modem, it will show which channels it has picked up, which RF frequencies it has picked up for the downstreams, which RF frequencies it is using for the upstream channels. It will show the IP address that it is given. It will show the, uh, the, the config file that it's using from the cable modem termination system. So it is more than just a, you know, more than just a standalone cable modem to see if you can lock into the system. It does show, uh, it's like a true meter, it does show numbers and uh, levels and performance for that uh, cable modem system. Another nice feature of this meter is in the uh, measure screen like I mentioned earlier, you do have this picture of the signal that's picking up. If you tap on that picture in this uh, format, it will go full screen for you. So this is a full screen shot. Of course, it's a different picture, but it's a full screen view of uh, what it would do for you. And so it will, it will show you a full screen picture, plus it has audio. You can adjust the volume of the audio on the meter. Uh, and then tapping it once again will will take it back down to the standard uh, measurement screen here. The, these are some of the constellation views of this BT Pro 7000. So here we have a QAM 256 constellation. 
On the left side here is a full, the full view of the constellation, showing all 256 data points. On the right here is a zoomed-in quadrant, looking at one quadrant of four, uh, so you can see a little bit better how well the data bits are achieving hitting the center of the, the target boxes here. Same thing for 8VSB. 8VSB uh, format is, they call it a, a constellation diagram or a waterfall. Uh, the 8VSB waterfall here shown full uh, view and then also zoomed in to one quarter of it to see a little better representation of it. Next, we'll move on to the BT Pro 8000. Um, that, again, is one of the newest meters in our lineup. This is the BT Pro 8000S. Uh, so it measures from 4 megahertz through 2610 megahertz. So this is this will do uh, cable television, master antenna television, just like all the other meters we looked at so far. Uh, but this will also do satellite measurements. So this will do true satellite measurements for you if you do do a bit of work with satellite signals. So here the uh, has a a little fresher uh, uh, menu system here. So you tap on the screen, you, you, when you're in the main menu, you tap on satellite and it brings up sub menus here for what you want to do with your satellite signals. Do you want to measure them? You want to see the spectrum view, the constellation view, what have you. Uh, this is the sp a spectrum analyzer view of satellites, the full, full satellite span across the frequencies. These, this is a QPSK constellation and an 8PSK constellation. Again, these are both full screen, full, uh, full view of them. You can also zoom into one quadrant uh, like you did before with the constellations. Uh, it has a satellite finder feature. Also has az azimuth and elevation. Uh, based on your location and what satellite you're trying to look for. Uh, has an MPEG service list for different satellites as well. In the TV off-air measurements uh, world, we have, we have the TV menu here and similar sub-menu here, measurements, the spectrum, uh, constellation, uh, and here we can see this looks very similar to the main measurement screen, looks very similar to the BT Pro 7000, um, and as does the uh, spectrum analyzer view. The spectrum analyzer is essentially a spectrum analyzer view. Um, here is a single channel monitoring. This you can monitor uh, a channel from 30 minutes up through one week to do uh, static monitoring, uh, you know, long-term monitoring of a channel if you think you have issues with a channel. And then here up in the upper right is showing the uh, MPEG service list. So here we've got several different services on this one channel, channel 37 that we're looking at, several different services available. And the cable television measurements, again, we have the measure and the picture screens. We have a spectrum analyzer screen, constellations, uh, leakage and ingress screens, uh, and the MPEG service list, just like I showed on the uh, previous slides. And the channel monitor, again, again, the single channel monitoring graph here for uh, monitoring the level the, and the BER of that channel over time. So if you have a, an, an issue where you may have um, atmospheric issues causing problems with your signals, uh, if you're picking up signal, uh, or a failing amplifier in your system that 
is degrading over time, some a, a monitor like this will help help you track that down. Uh, one great feature with this uh, BT Pro 8000S and something that I just started uh, experimenting with myself with some uh, testing is it also has remote monitoring. So you via a web application, uh, basis, so a basic uh, web browser will log you into the meter and uh, once you're into the meter, you can set it up to measure specific channels. You can look at a spectrum analyzer view. So here we've got uh, one specific channel we're looking at. Um, channel info or the frequency of 333 megahertz. I believe this was channel 42. And so it's telling us the, the received power level, the MER is very good, noise margin is excellent, and then the bit error rates are, are basically non-existent. So that's excellent for monitoring the, the channel. Then we come over here and we're looking at in the top right we're looking at the spectrum analyzer view. This took me a second to uh, to get used to because here we have kind of an inverse picture where the background is colored and the uh, carriers are blank or clear see-through. So, but this is a spectrum analyzer view of multiple QAM carriers running across the, the spectrum there. And then we've also got a transport stream analyzer that's that's showing breaking down, showing me I have four uh, four programs on this channel, and what the PIDs are, the program identifier numbers are for video and audio for that uh, for that those programs. Uh, so again, it can it's a remote monitoring. We log in with a standard browser. We can set the channel that we want to monitor. We can view the single channel like we're looking at here, uh, or a spectrum analysis view, or the transport stream for the digital channels. And again, this isn't really set up to scroll through multiple different channels or anything. This is more designed to set it up and just monitor it occasionally throughout, um, similar to the, the uh, the previous settings on the data logger. So those are the RF meters that we have available in our lineup. This final piece here is a again a transport stream analyzer. We call it the MTSA Pro. Uh, it's an MPEG transport stream analyzer. So we can put into it RF signal ASI signal or an IP signal. Uh, this box here contains the key to unlock the software that we need to use with this, this device. So this works in conjunction with the laptop and the MTSA software. Uh, but so the software won't open unless the, the, the dongle, the MTSA Pro hardware is plugged into the computer. Um, but then you can either monitor and evaluate signals again from an RF signal coming in on this RF port, from an ASI signal coming in this ASI port, or an IP signal coming in from the IP port on your computer. So it, it utilizes the IP port on the computer. Not there is not an IP port on this box. Um, but uh, but it will evaluate IP uh, IP signals as well. And here you can see a basic uh, screenshot of the primary the primary screen on the uh, MTSA software. It's got uh, it will break down. Here we've got program channel 11. This is an off air or this is a local channel to us that we're looking at. Uh, local channel 11, and it, but it breaks down. You can see the it breaks down the video, telling us it's 480 uh, standard definition signal, 4:3 aspect ratio, and so on. 
Uh, if I expanded these audios, it would open up the audio and show us all of the specs about the audio as well. It does show a picture of the uh, program that you're evaluating, as well as uh, several, these are called TR101290, Technical Report 101290 is a standard for MPEG signals um, and and the uh, quality of those signals, the accuracy of those signals with regards to certain things like program clock reference accuracy and repetition are a couple of the things that are measured in TR101290. So the setup of the uh, MTSA software here, we've got, uh, we drop down and say we select an RF input, <clears throat> which gives us this pop-up box where we can select what cable channel we want to pick up. For example, we can pick up 8BSB, 64QAM, 256QAM, what cable channel we want to get. Uh, we can do a spectrum inverted or spectrum normal. And then finally, we can select whether it's we tune in by frequency, by terrestrial, off-air, channel assignments, or cable channel assignments. And then here we are playing the stream. We also can record the stream up here, uh, which would record. You, you can go into the settings before playing a stream and tell it to record for two minutes and then stop the recording or something like that. But uh, recordings would be useful to send to us for our engineers to evaluate them if you're unsure what's going on with your signals. We can, th this unit can break down the signals all the way down to the binary ones and zeros of the channel. Uh, I can't determine what exactly that is. That's something within the elementary PID and the elementary program identifier of the channel. But uh, yeah, if you can decipher all of that, it can break it all the way down to the ones and zeros. Here are the TR101290 uh, industry specs standards that I mentioned earlier. This is a table of what the indicators are and whether they're essential or you know, may, may, may not necessarily cause, uh, prevent decoding of the content, so it may not cause an, a, a physical failure of the signal. Uh, the CRC error, errors, cyclic redundancy count applies to the program association table and program map tables only. Uh, but all of these show on the on the TR101290 tab. And with that, I will offer uh, answer any questions that may have arisen. And as Liz said earlier, uh, you know, more extensive questions will get answered in an email response. Okay, we do have a couple questions that came up. Um, okay. What does it take to get a Pro Idiom license? That is a very good question. Unfortunately, I do not know the answer to that. Uh, I mean, I, I know it that. Is an it is an extra purchase for, um, I believe. I, I know the Pro Idiom add-on is an additional cost to that meter. I know that. Uh, I, again, I don't know. I don't know what it takes to get a Pro Idiom license to be able to to pass Pro Idiom features, Pro Idiom signal on a system. Okay. Um, how ready are your meters for ASTC3 measurements? Uh, ATSC 3.0 is a new standard that's going to be coming out for the off-air world. It is akin to DOCSIS 3.1, where it's utilizing OFDM technology. Um, spectrum analyzers will see the signals and measure the signals, but 
the main measurement part of the screen, this part of the screen will not decipher uh, the OFDM channels on these meters in their current state. We're working with the uh, engineers to determine if it's just going to be a firmware upgrade to make it so, or if it's going to have to be a hardware change. We don't know that at this time. Okay. Um, Scott Mulkey has a BT Pro 7000S and doesn't think the firmware has been updated. There are instructions to update the uh, firmware available on our website. If you go into um, support, there is a thing about firmware updates. You can follow the directions there. But um, you, we can always touch base with you on a separate note if you need additional help. Um, does the a satellite 8000 perform a blind scan of an otherwise unknown transponder? Yes, it will. I, I will leave it at that and further answer that in an email. But yes, it does the blind scan. Okay. Can the 8000S find all satellites in the ARC? As far as I know, yes. I have not personally tested it, but from what I understand, yes. Okay. What is a safe or max level input for the MTSA Pro? The MTSA Pro, and give me um, give me one second here to pull up a spec on it. Um, where did it go? The MTS, I believe, I want to say somewhere in the neighborhood of 25, but let me just go right to the source here and look at the spec sheet. Input, minimum levels, minus 15 dBmV, minus 20, minus 30. I have, I know I have put plus 25 dBmV into it without issue. I probably would not try going more than that. Um, what is the, is the frequency, I'm sorry, what is the max input level allowed on the fiber input? Huh. On the 8,000s, on the... It, Mike Mason did not uh, specify, so... I'll well, it's the 7,000s oh, and the 8,000s. Thank you, Mike. The 8,000. 7,000s and the 8,000s are the ones that have it. So let's see what they say. Again, unfortunately, that is not uh, something I have personally tested. Why am I not moving here? Power range does not list a power level on the input to the, I will have to get back to him on that one. Okay does not list it right there. Do these meters have a speaker so you can hear TV channels? Yes. All all of this all of the meters have a speaker so you can hear the audio. Yes. Okay. Is the frequency range limited to 1 gigahertz on all of these analyzers? Uh, the BT Quam Pro and the BT Pro 1000 meters are, are 1000 megahertz. The Pro 7000, uh, no, that's the Pro 1000. Where did it go? The 7000, I listed it as, goes up to 1250 megahertz. And the 8000 goes to 2610 megahertz. Okay. Um, somebody asked, where do we get a replacement power supply for the BT Pro? That's something you do through our service department. So if you call our 800 number and ask for the service department, they will help you. Mm -hmm. uh, what is a safe or max level input for the MTSA Pro? I think we answered that. Yeah, 
Yeah, that that again, I I wouldn't go more than a plus twenty five into the Pro. Okay. On the BT Pro 8000, is the fiber optic port for an angled connector? SC slash APC, it's not the normal green. Right, it is a, I did see that here somewhere. Man, I had that up here. I had that and I was going to put it in there on the slides, but then I didn't. But yes, it takes ST, I want to say STSC. Hmm. Well, without, go, without reading through all of that, yes, it does take an angle polish connector. I will elaborate in the email on which connection, which fiber connections it accepts. Okay, great. Um, what is ASI? ASI is an asynchronous serial interface. It is it runs across a coax cable, typically has a BNC connector, like a, a bayonet style connector, and it is an uncompressed signal. Or no, is excuse me, it is a compressed serial data stream of the, the digital signal. SDI is uncompressed data. ASI is compressed data. So typically it would come out of a commercial satellite receiver or something like that as the source. Okay. Um, will signal level meters measure ATSC 3.0? Will they measure MER? Will everyone have to buy new meters? I think you've kind of answered that. We don't have that answer as of yet. We're still kind of working it out, correct? Right. The the I know that the, the BT Quam Pro and the Pro 1000 will not measure 3.0. So the Quam Pro and the Pro 1000 will not measure 3.0. The Pro 7000 and the 8000s will measure it on the spectrum analyzer view uh, again, but I don't know yet if it's going to be a firmware or a hardware upgrade to be able to measure it directly on the measurement screens. Okay, and then um, somebody says, I work in a building with six modulated channels from four contemporary research modulators feeding into a BT combiner and amplifier equipment. Would the BT Quam Pro be sufficient for basic troubleshooting of that system. Yes, that could be that could be a good, um, you know, starting signal signal measuring device to uh, to measure and troubleshoot signals. Um, of course, if you run into more exotic issues, it may not be sufficient. But for most applications, the BT Quam Pro is a good good starting point. Yes. Okay, um, does anybody have any other questions coming through the Q&A? No? All right, well, we really appreciate your time. We hope this was informative. We will be having one more next week, and I will be sending out a notification on that very shortly. The slides for this presentation will be up on our website by tomorrow, as will a recording of this presentation. Thank you again, and I hope you all stay safe and have a great day. Bye. Thank you.